One of the most fulfilling and satisfying feeling we can experience as humans is to explore the world, to discover, to solve mysteries, to see what's over the horizon. And this is applied to the world of Maiden Abyss as well. Explorers come all over the world to see with their own eyes this massive vertical hole in the middle of the ocean, with many of them claiming that the abyss has a strange feeling to it. It's like it calls to them. But unlike the real world, instead of going over the horizon, you have to go to the depths of this world, where literal hell can be found. If you think more about it, the abyss doesn't call you because it wants to be explored. In reality, the abyss is more like a beast who lures you into his mouth to devour you. And only the absolute lunatics are willing to accept this invitation. And today, we will be one of those madmans. So join me into this adventure to discover and to see what lies in the abyss. But first I suggest we should explore a bit the island where the abyss is located. This island is situated close to the equator which means it should be very hot here. But thanks to the cool air coming from the abyss, the island has a cool temperature, especially around the hole. Here we will find a large town named Ort. It is mainly occupied by explorers but you can also find researchers and merchants from where we can buy equipment or trade the stuff we find in the abyss. Here you can also find structure and buildings like the explorers guild where is managed every explorers rank and every information about the abyss is discussed here first. Or the orphanage where kids live and learn how to become explorers. Or even the wharf, a place constructed in the deepest point of the city built by illegal explorers where they carry out their illegal activities like selling artifacts on the black market. Or the main source of energy is provided by artifacts placed in different locations of the town and Thanks to that, the citizen can carry out their daily activities. Before we embark, we need to learn what artifacts are, but much more to learn about the curse of the abyss. The artifacts are relics scattered all over the abyss and each one of them is unique and have different powers. The ones found at the first layer are pretty basic like a compass or an umbrella used as a shield, but their power increases the deeper they are located. And finally, the curse of the abyss. There are a lot of dangers in the abyss, deadly creature, hazardous environment and much more. But the biggest challenge is to ascend back from the abyss, even just a step up can trigger the curse and the symptoms aggravates the deeper you are. We'll discuss about them as we go. So now prepared with the equipment and information, we are ready to start descending into the unknown. Just a step below, we are already in the first layer. Each one of them has a specific name and this one is called the edge of the abyss. The first layer stretches down from 0 to 1350 meters. The curse at this level is not a big deal at all. The symptoms are just light dizziness and nausea. The overall environment at this layer does not change from the one in Orf. The creatures who live here are mostly harmless, such as Hammerbeak, a species of bird with a really hard beak that is fused with their skull. We can find this bird all the way down to the fourth layer and they are a very good source of food. The demon fish is pretty much the same, both of them have a danger level of 1 star, which means it's insignificant. And other kinds of creatures like horncrier who has no eyes and use the echo from their horns to survey the surrounding, and the mentoyer who becomes very aggressive when someone enters their territory. Due to the peaceful nature of the abyss, even the kids from the orphanage who wants to become an explorer are allowed to go around the first layer. But that doesn't mean this place is completely harmless. The silk fang is a very large insect with a danger level of 2, so you need to be cautious when you see this insect. They move extremely fast and can spit a paralyzing poison from their mouths and their snots, but they usually will not leave their territory, so as long as we don't step too close, we should be fine. Another thing we should be careful is that sometimes creatures from the second and third layer will come here for food. It seems that the creatures from the abyss have the ability to see the curse so they can avoid it and they can travel to other layers without too much problem. On the first layer it seems that there are not too many relics. The most important one found here was the star compass, which is pointing to the bottom of the abyss. In terms of flora, sadly at this layer there is not too much to say. There are these giant trees and occasionally we can find this flower named eternal fortunes. It can grow on any soil and it grows very fast. This flower can be found everywhere in the abyss. One of the biggest mysteries and piece of history is found here. Around 300 
300 meters deep is a burial tower where hundreds of skeletons estimated to be around 2000 years old can be found and all of them are in a praying position. Under the burial tower is a tomb where more praying skeletons estimated to be around 4000 years old are. The tomb leads to another one with skeletons around 6000 years old but we don't have any information about them at the moment. With all of this done it is time to travel to the next layer. The second layer, also known as the Forest of Temptation, starts at 1350 meters and ends at 2600 meters. The symptoms of the curse begin to be more dangerous at this level, such as intense nausea, headaches and numbness of limbs. Here things start to be more serious, the fauna environment suddenly change, turning into a tropical rainforest with huge vegetation. The first half of the layer is filled by a forest of massive plants resembling lily pads, which help us to hide from predators, but in the same time it obscures our vision. Many explorers get lost here. Luckily for us, we can also find here a type of moss named Amagiri that point towards the north of the abyss, so we can use it to exit this forest but we need to be very careful because around this area roams the corp sweeper a giant bird with a danger level of three stars they usually live in colonies they are carnivores and very violent the elders will hunt and carry life prey to the young and due to their size they can easily catch and carry a human the most terrifying ability they have is to mimic sounds used for hunting if they capture something like a human they will learn their prey's cries for help and use it to lure other to their colony Unlike normal creatures, their right eye is missing and instead is situated on the top of their heads, which gives them a very good spatial awareness, being able to detect threats coming from above. Despite this, if you capture one of the chicks, you can tame it and they are quite affectionate. After we manage to avoid them and pass the 2000 meters point, we arrive at the inverted forest, where everything is upside down. The curse is weaker around this area, but it's still hard to travel, we will need to jump from from tree to tree to traverse this place. The wind currents coming from the abyss are much colder in this area and it is also quite dark. In this upside down forest lives a species of creatures similar to monkeys named Inubio. They have very long arms and fingers that allows them to swing through the trees with ease. If we step on their territory they will become aggressive and start to throw things at us and because they are much faster it's better to avoid them. Not too far we can see an observation camp built by explorers and it mainly serves as a resting point for them. But here lives Ozan so it's better to avoid her too. At the bottom of this layer lives a species named Otobas. They usually set their homes around the lakes in the forest and they are the apex predators in this area with a danger level of 3 stars. Autobots are capable of swallowing humans whole so we should not get too close to them. And even if you manage to kill one of them they are hard to cook so it's not even worth it. Thankfully they are omnivores so they are not very aggressive. Around the lakes we can also spot an insect called Rohanas which are similar to fireflies emitting a purple light from their bodies. In terms of artifacts the only interesting one is the Curse Wandering Box, a giant square box that seems to revive everything is in the interior of the box. But except from one instance every subject died shortly after. It looks like we reached the bottom of the second layer so I think it is time to head towards the next one. The third layer, also known as the Great Fall, has a depth range from 2600 meters to 7000 meters. In addition to the symptoms of the curse from the second layer, you will also experience vertigo combined with visual and auditory hallucination. In terms of environment, the third layer might be the hardest to traverse. This place is just a giant vertical hole and it is also quite narrow compared to the rest of the abyss. The only viable way of traversing it is through a network of caverns. This place is mainly occupied by aerial predators such as Madoka Jacks who looks like a hybrid between a reptile and a bug. They are also quite large creatures. They have membranes that let them glide on the wind currents in the third layer and they feed on creatures that live along the walls such as Neritantan. They are a rodent species, completely harmless. To protect themselves from predators they bunch up together in their nests forming a near impenetrable wall which is pretty funny. 
In those caves hide a creature named Amakageme, who has a very large stomach. Their bodies are covered in veins which they use to attach themselves to the cave walls. They emit a strong smell of Barakochan fruit to lure Neri Tantan into their mouths on the top of their body. We need to be extra careful from here on because on this layer lives the most dangerous creature so far, the Crimson Split Jaw. This giant serpent has a danger level of 4 star, meaning it's deadly. It has the ability to fly spreading his hoof. They are very ferocious predators that attack any explorers on sight. Even though it's almost impossible if you manage to kill one, you can potentially find a lot of treasures. Those creatures have the habit of swallowing artifacts and minerals, but to be honest I don't think it's worth trying. It is possible that many artifacts are hidden on this place, but because of the layout and predators at this level, it's too dangerous to search for them. While we navigate through the caverns, we also can spot a pirate ship stuck on the wall, but how the ship got there, it's a mystery to this day. After quite some time, we can finally see the mist that comes from the fourth layer, so it's time to descend even deeper. The fourth layer, also known as the Goblets of Giants, is probably the biggest layer in the abyss, with a depth from 7000 to 12000 meters. Here the symptoms of the curse start to become severe and life-threatening, which consists of intense pain through the body and bleeding from every orifice. Upon the entrance we can already spot the absurdly overgrown vegetation, with 800 meters tall plants shaped like cups. It seems that the vegetation grows at a very rapid pace at this layer, making the layout of this place constantly changing, so it's almost impossible to make a clear map of this place. These giant plants we see right here are found mostly at the top of the fourth layer. They are called flat creeper. At the bottom of these plants we can find some yellow shining grass, a bioluminescent grass that can be used as spice for cooking. At the top of the flat creeper this water from the air is collected, creating shallow pools of hot water. And because of this high concentration of plants and pools of hot water, the area is mostly foggy. The big problem is that many creatures live in these shallow pools, with the most dangerous one being the orb pisser. This beast has a danger level of 5 stars, the biggest level so far. Even though they are herbivores with their diet consisting of algae that grows in the flat creepers, they are ferociously temperamental and defensive over their territory and they consider this entire 1 km diameter area to be its territory, so it's quite challenging to avoid them. The good news is that their population is quite small, but at the same time it is said that a single war pisser took the life of over 100 experienced explorers. Their entire body is covered in long poisonous needles that can pierce through metals as if it was paper. Their venom is quite slow at killing victims, but it greatly weakening those affected by it, causing their body to swell up and in many cases the victim resolve in the amputation of their limbs. However, the orb pissers have one major weak point, their red face. This is a very sensitive spot, so just by nearly touching them around the hole it caused them great pain and they will go berserk. Sadly for us, the orb pissers are very intelligent and intuitive creatures, so they will know if you are up to something, meaning they will not give you a chance to use any tools or some other things to hurt them. Ok, so knowing all this information about them, we can get to the conclusion that we should get the fuck out of here. And quickly. Just below we can find a hidden passage which leads to a green hut where the curse seems to be absent. It was constructed by a person named Nanachi as a hideout to avoid the danger of the abyss. Just behind the hut there is a small flower field and a series of greystone also made by Nanachi, where he buried the explorers who experiment on. But don't worry, he only uses the ones who got so injured to the point that they can no longer be saved. In the lakes here that are on the top of the flat creepers are all sorts of marine life such as the demon fish again or the Kazura squid. And not too far from Nanachi's hideout we can spot the shroom bears, a small creature with lots of parasitic water shrooms attached on his back. Those plants suck out the nutrients of the host and store within. When the host is close to death the nutrients stored in the caps of shrooms are released back into the host's body, letting both of them to stay alive, so they have some sort of symbiotic relationship. If you want to use the mushroom for some reason like healing wounds faster, I suggest you should kill the bear first because removing them is extremely painful. 
In terms of artifact, at the fourth layer we can find the unheard bell which appears to have the power to stop time. Also here originates the curse wandering box. And lastly the fog wave which just simulates how the fog moves and floats around. At 9000 meters depth we arrive at the middle of the fourth layer. Here you can find the garden of the flowers of resilience, a place filled with the eternal fortune flowers. It is considered by all explorers that this is the most beautiful place in the entire abyss. It is a good resting place to just sit down, admire the beautiful view and rest for a bit. Although when I said a bit, I was uh, serious. As beautiful this place is, is equally if not even more dangerous because of the Amaranthine Deceptor. It is an insect who originates from the sixth layer and migrated here for some reason. And because of that they have a danger level of 5 stars. Their body color and form is similar to the Eternal Fortunes flower. So we need to be careful here because we don't know where they are hiding. They will attack any living beings that get too close to them and plant their larves inside their bodies. After planting their larvae they will slowly start to consume their host from the inside and multiply it rapidly. Did I forget to say that the host is still alive during all this process? Not only that but they will enter through the host's mouth to feed it and prolong their survival. Because of this huge infestation, Bondrud, one of the biggest explorers, sent one of his men to burn the whole place to stop the spreading of the Amaranthine Deceptors. Uh, so uh, I think we have seen enough for the moment, so let's continue our expedition. Now we reach the fifth layer, also known as the Sea of Corpses. It starts at 12,000 meters and ends at 13,000 meters, being the smallest layer but it is quite wide and it's situated pretty deep. To put in perspective, the deepest point on earth is the Mariana Trench at a depth of 11,000 meters, so we are much deeper than that. The symptoms of the curse here are completely sensory deprivation, confusion and self-harming behavior. And at this layer appears a new phenomenon. In the abyss, time flows different than at the surface and this effect starts to become extreme from this layer onwards. A week spent here is several months at the surface. This layer consists mostly of large sea with some crystallized section held up by a large layer of thick mud and bones, hence the name the Sea of Corpses. In the water lives a lot of sea monsters, but we don't have any information about them. The only one who we know about is the Hamashirama, a very bizarre fish. All their internal organs are packed into their heads and they can spit mucus from their mouths to paralyze the predators. If they are pulled out of the water, they will die pretty quickly. They are harmless so it's safe to hunt them. But things change when we get to the sandstone area. Here lives the stinger heads with a danger level of 5 stars. They are huge 7 tailed scorpions that reach over 2 meters on height. Each tail contains a dreadful poison that can melt flesh and bones instantly killing their victims with a relentless assault of their tails. They hunt in groups so we should avoid their nest if we want to stay alive. At last we arrive at Edo front. Initially here was the ruins of a ritual site. But but was later modified into a researcher station by Bondrud around 10 years ago. Edo Front has an infinite power source thanks to the rotation of the unstoppable whirlpool it is built upon. At the bottom there is a pit where there are a lot of hollows but we'll discuss about them later. All the artifacts at this layer are owned by Bondrud so we don't know if they are originate from here. But I will just briefly mention them. This Paragamos which is a powerful laser. This Aholic who allows the user to transfer his mind in other bodies. The Shaker also known as the Curse Needle which inflicts the curse of the third layer. The Gangway which reflects attacks. And lastly the Canopy Unto Dawn which works like an armor. In the middle of the front is an elevator that goes to the sixth layer being the only method of traveling there. But in order to use it it needs a white whistle and to create one we need to sacrifice one of us. So. Who it will be? I'm just joking. I already have one. What was that? How did I get it? Uh, well, um, hey, look, the elevator is here. So let's go. It will take a few hours to cross the sea and reach the next layer. So sit down and admire the creatures in the sea. If you need to go to the toilet, well, I suggest you should wait. But if it's really urgent, um, I guess you can shit in that hole. You are not the first one anyway. The sixth layer. 
the capital of the unreturned. It begins at 30,000 meters and ends up at 15,500 meters. The time distortion is even more extreme here. Some of the locals claim that they came here 150 years ago, but at the surface more than 2000 years have passed. Up until now, even though it is very hard, you could still return to the surface. But from here on, the effects of the curse are loss of humanity, or death. The first one is much worse. The hollows we have seen at the fifth layer are actually former humans who ascend from the sixth layer. Their body has been deformed to this blob and they lose their mind and personality. So basically a fate worse than death. But under very specific circumstances you can receive the blessing of the abyss. Your form will still be changed, growing fur all over your body and other characteristics like tails or claws. But you will also be able to see the curse, so it will be much easier to avoid it. There is just one person who returned from this place alive, and that was Bondrud, and we don't know how he managed it. This whole place has a yellow color, and it is rumored that here exists a golden city, but the only thing we can find are some ruins. The ruins themselves spreads out in every direction, and oftentimes buildings are diagonal, upside down, or sideways. It is quite dangerous to stay in open space around here, because bright geothermal explosion that emit poisonous gas occur quite often. Like we discussed earlier, the amaranthine deceptor originates from this place. Life at this layer seems to be much more thriving and diverse, such as the emperor shell, a type of lizard who uses his shell to protect himself from the explosions. They will continue to grow endlessly for as long as they live and they appear to have ridiculous long lifespan, with some of them reaching even 30 meters. Here we can also see the Fuzoshepu, with a massive gelatinous body with only the head being visible. In reality, this is not just a creature, but an entire hive. The males group to form this jelly mass and the queen is the head who controls them. Once the queen is dead, the males will look for another one. It is able to melt flesh and bones. Other creatures are the hermit rat, a combination between a rat, a bunny and a snail, with a powerful bite. The Mizo Jack, a docile animal that lives in groups near the geothermal vents. The Pseudo Water, a ferocious parasite that looks like water and would lay their eggs in everyone who drinks it. It will melt your body in the course of a few days to create a new pool of water. The Kamazuno, a hybrid between a rhino and a gorilla. And finally, the most dangerous creatures on this layer, the Turbine Dragon, with a danger level of 6 stars. They have poisonous scales that rupture when struck. They are tenacious and move freely in 3 dimensions without any regard of the curse. They have 6 legs and a tail reminiscent of a snail shell. Not too long ago was a village here, made from a malformed human body that was destroyed by one of her children named Fapta, a strange hollow born from artifacts. This artifact is called the Cradle of Desire, who has the ability to grant the user a wish. But not in the way you think, it's a bit of a twist there. Near the end of the 6th layer, at approximately 300 meters above the 7th layer, is a camp used by other explorers. From here on, we don't have too much information about what is to come. It is speculated that the 7th layer, also known as the File Milestone, starts at 50,500 meters and ends somewhere around 20,000 meters. Here the curse is just certain death. The only information we got about this place is from Liza, a very experienced explorer. Her note stated that there she spotted a creature similar to a human, a hybrid between a machine and a human, who is not affected by the curse at all. It also said that there exists something shaped like a ring, and now the only location that remains is the bottom of the abyss, which is somewhere even deeper than 20,000 meters. Double the size of the Mariana Trench. It is rumored that at the entrance live some creatures which are shrouded in mystery called the gatekeepers. So it looks like our adventure stop here. We cannot go any further to explore because, uh, well, you see, uh, nobody did it so far and uh, we cannot be the first because, uh, anyways, I think we've seen enough for just a day. We are also stuck here at the 6th layer because, um, well, I don't want to risk to become that thing, so I guess we will need to wait for someone to take us from here, uh, so we need to wait for a while. Huh? Do you want to say something? Oh, let me untie you first so you can move.
Eh, eh, you fucking lunatic, you kidnapped me and took me here pretending all this time that you are some sort of a guide that presents me this hell and now you tell me that we are stuck here forever? You know what? I will jump off this cliff. I don't care anymore. Bye. Uh, wow. Now, that was an exit. I don't know what was his problem. Eh. Well, um, I guess I'm stuck here alone now. You know what? Who needs friends? I'm going alone in the seventh layer. Bottom of the abyss, here I come. Well.